Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about this relatively recent study that might have identified yet another unusual mystery coming from somewhat distant universe. A mystery in regards to what we refer to as the intracluster light, ICL. Something that up until relatively recently was actually extremely difficult to detect and extremely difficult to see, but that we always knew existed. And the light that the scientists have always believed is produced by various stars and various star-like objects, possibly stuck between galaxies, or basically not orbiting or attached to any galaxy in the vicinity, and sort of traveling completely by themselves away from everything else. But because there are so many of them, altogether they produce this light visible from faraway distances if you were to somehow remove all of the other light that usually outshines them quite dramatically. And because of this, their origin has always been connected to the galactic interaction or various types of galactic stripping, like the one you see right here, where this galaxy is essentially losing all of the stars because of the interaction with another galaxy or because of the passage through a very dense environment. The Mice Galaxies, or NGC 4676, is probably one of the more common examples. But the recent study seems to actually kind of discredit this, or actually discover something entirely different, presenting a new mystery. In other words, the origin of these stars, or the origin of intercluster light, has now become a mystery once again, and probably one of the bigger mysteries in the universe. But let's take a few steps back, and let's actually talk about the importance of intracluster light in our search for dark matter. And there's actually a really important connection to dark matter that I'm going to be mentioning really soon. So obviously we still have no idea what dark matter is actually made out of and what exactly it represents. The actual existence of dark matter as some kind of a phenomenon is not really disputed. What is disputed by many scientists is what exactly it's made out of, if it's made out of anything, or what creates these unusual phenomena. Now prior to, I guess, 2017, one of the more common alternative explanations to dark matter was the idea known as MOND, Modified Newtonian Dynamics. And what this does is basically changes a few Newtonian formula to kind of explain why we are observing certain motions of stars across galaxies, or basically explain the galactic curves. And it does do a pretty good job explaining this, where dark matter is no longer necessary. But the thing is, it's so far really the only sort of explanation it provides. It does not explain dozens of other phenomena we're observing that also appear to be created by dark matter. The common example here is various gravitational landing effects inside massive clusters. Here's an image from Hubble telescope of the cluster known as MAX0416. The sort of bluish cyan color here shows us the distribution of mass in this cluster, and the purplish magenta color shows us the overall gravitational magnification produced by various mass. And the thing is, there's really no explanation from MOND or any other alternative theories of what actually is causing this. This cluster does not possess enough mass to produce these effects. Something else is hiding here. And quite a lot of it has to hide here to produce these effects. Other common examples usually look at galactic clusters in various frequencies. Here the pink is X-rays and the blue represents regular matter. And this actually suggests that the actual gravitational effects, blue, is dramatically different from the huge amount of gas and matter that interacts to create X-rays which are in pink. And so if most of the mass is not created by gas, what exactly creates it? Once again, something hidden, something unexplained. And one of the most iconic examples is the one right here. This is the famous Coma Cluster. This was actually the original cluster discovered by Fritz Zwicky back in like the 30s or something. Okay, 1933 to be exact. Where he realized that the galaxies here were moving way too fast compared to all of the visible mass that's actually available. So there was something invisible holding the galaxies together, which he referred to as dark matter with the actual mass distribution also suggesting that the centers of mass were not within the visible galaxies, but somewhere around them within invisible space. And so there's definitely something going on here. But to prove this point even further, or to try to observe the distribution of dark matter in various galactic clusters, recent studies have started to propose using intercluster light, ICL. Or more specifically, by looking at the actual distribution of light and how it sort of bends some of the galaxies behind it, it becomes possible to determine the overall density and the overall distribution of dark matter in a typical cluster. Ironically, the first ever detection of ICL or intercluster light was also made by Zwicky and also in Coma Cluster as well. This was back in 1951 and here he essentially detected a very very faint intergalactic light that nobody has ever seen before. And so this cluster served as the foundation for a lot of different theories. There are over a thousand different galaxies here, 
all orbiting around a central space, and it's about 320 million light years away from us, making this cluster relatively easy to see. And so because of these discoveries, the scientists have been really curious to find more intercluster light in distant clusters, mostly to help them map the dark matter, but to also possibly help answer the question of its origins. Is all of this just created by different stars, or maybe something else? And the question of that something else comes from the recent study I've discussed possibly a few months ago, with the video and the study in the description below, that kind of implied that, well, maybe, just maybe, some of this extra light we're seeing could potentially be explained by hypothetical dark matter particles known as axions. Particles that have been proposed to explain something entirely different, but could also explain dark matter as well. They've never really been officially discovered, there have been some hints in the past, but nothing concrete yet. But in this particular case, they've been used to potentially explain all of this extra light. The question is, can they actually explain intracluster light? Well, not a lot of scientists think so, or at least not a lot did before. But this new discovery potentially might raise some questions. So here's what the scientists found. Like I said before, the original explanation for intracluster light is that it all comes from various stars stuck between galaxies, and is basically produced by stars that were stripped from within galaxies by some kind of a gravitational interaction, maybe with partner galaxies, maybe with something else. And based on this assumption, for a very long time the scientists believed that if you were to look back far enough in time, here we're talking about the universe billions of years ago, you would discover that there should be a lot less intracluster light, because a lot less of these stars would be outside of galaxies. In other words, you would expect most stars to be still inside galaxies, thus less ICL. Or to make this a little bit more clear, the assumption here was that if I were to look at a galactic cluster that's only about a few million light years away from us, I would see a lot of ICL, a lot of light. But if I were to look at a cluster that's possibly 6 billion to 7 billion light years away from us, I should expect a lot less light, because not a lot of stars escape from galaxies yet, and the majority of stars are still within galaxies themselves. I mean, logically, it kind of makes sense. But the scientists behind this recent study wanted to actually find out if this is what's happening here. And so they managed to use some of the Hubble observations to look much farther into the universe and to then discover 10 galaxy clusters as far away as 10 billion light years away from planet Earth. Something that's almost impossible to detect using any other telescope except for maybe James Webb. And in the process discovered that it looks like the intracluster light is pretty much exactly the same as it's always been. In other words, the amount of total light has not changed almost at all. It hasn't decreased or increased, which of course presents a bit of a problem. The problem of the origin of intracluster light. How can a galaxy that's about 10 billion light years away from us have pretty much the same amount of light as the one that's much, much closer? There should be more stars technically, and there should be more light, yet there isn't. With the first explanation of course being that maybe intracluster light is not created by stripping stars from galaxies, Maybe these stars are produced in some other way, which already would be a pretty big mystery and a pretty important discovery. But going back to the original question I asked near the beginning, it also might suggest that some of the intracluster light is not created by stars. Some of it, at least in theory, could be created by these hypothetical axions, which of course would point to the existence of dark matter as axions, would also prove that axions are real and do exist, and could potentially also solve a lot of other mysteries the scientists have been having trouble with. Although maybe it's a little bit too early to speculate about the actual explanation for now. I mean, here they only took a look at 10 different clusters, and so they obviously have to look at more samples and more different clusters in order to see if this is a pattern that seems to repeat everywhere. And of course, if these are actual stars producing all of this light, the next obvious question is, where exactly did all of these stars come from? If this was not a result of galactic interaction and galactic stripping, these stars must have been created in some other way and must have existed between these galaxies for a very long time. And so maybe in various galactic clusters that have a lot of mass and a lot of dense environments between galaxies, stars can form in some entirely different way, which would also be a pretty big discovery. And so whether this is produced entirely by stars whose origin is unknown, or whether some of this light is produced by the mysterious dark matter, either way, this is a pretty big finding and will definitely lead to more studies and more follow-ups. New mystery, no answers just yet but a pretty exciting discovery that I'm sure scientists will be talking about for years to come. For now though, I'm sure there are going to be more discoveries about intercluster light and of course dark matter in the next few months as well. And I'm definitely going to be talking about those discoveries as well. So definitely subscribe if you enjoy these topics and maybe share this video with someone who loves learning about space and sciences 
Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership or by buying the one full person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.